heart of the Sunshine State, Valley Sports Sun and Valley Sports Florida. The heart of the fan. ceremony before that game. Moments ago, Wade Boggs enshrined in the inaugural Rays Baseball Hall of Fame in advance of game three of this three-game series between the Rays and the Atlanta Braves. Baseball's two best teams coming up here on Valley Sports Sun, but first we welcome you inside Tropicana Field. Another edition of Rays Baseball on a Sunday afternoon alongside Denard Spann. I'm Rich Hollenberg, Dwayne Statz, and Brian Anderson standing by with the call in mere moments. So we have a plant high product, a Tampa boy through and through, Wade Boggs enshrined in the Rays Hall of Fame. You're a Tampa project product yourself. What's it like watching one of your own go into the Rays Hall of Fame? I thought that was just an awesome moment for him. Um, a dream come true type moment uh, for Wade Boggs. Obviously, he's in the Major League Baseball Hall of Fame, um, but I'm sure that today um, being a part of the Tampa Bay Rays Hall of Fame is a special moment for him and his family. Um, you heard by him speaking about playing for his hometown team, and you're just talking about a guy who had an 18-year career. Um, when I think of his career, I think of longevity and consistency, and I'm thankful that you know he came out of Tampa because he inspired players like myself and so many other players that come out of Tampa to pursue excellence and be great. Well, from all of us at Valley Sports, Wade Boggs, congratulations on a Hall of Fame career with the Rays and throughout your 18 years as a big leaguer. Now we turn to the business of baseball. Today, the Braves here once again. They've won the first two of this three-game series, and throughout the series, we have seen a pair of all-star first basemen on display, Denard. Yeah, we have. Yandy Diaz and Matt Olson have been really good ball players. Um, Yandy, Yandy, starting off with Yandy Diaz over his last 15 games, he's done an unbelievable job with getting back on track, hitting over 400 with 22 hits, 904 OPS. Um, his previous 15 games, he got himself in a little bit of a funk, but he's been able to revert back to the old Yandy Diaz, if you will, by letting the ball get deeper, hitting more ground balls, and it's just awesome the fact that he has that versatility to his game to be able to, you know, go back and hit for more average. And then Matt Olson leading the world in home runs at RBI. Yeah, Matt Olson, a very strong human being, has power to all fields. Uh, one of my favorite left-handed swings in all of the game of baseball. Um, 17 home runs that he has this year off of fastballs and nine off of breaking balls. So if I'm a pitcher, you really don't know what to throw him because he hits it all. And what he does really special is he hits the ball to all fields. A lot of his home runs come in the opposite field and straightaway center. Right-hander Zach Eflin and Bryce Elder get the start for their respective clubs. Eflin looking to reach double-digit wins before the All-Star break. And Elder leading the majors in the ERA. Dwayne and B, I have the call coming up next. The first Devil Rays home run. Wade Boggs takes the grand tour. So humbled, so honored to close out my career, what I've done, be on the ground floor of a franchise, uh, their inaugural season. And Tampa's always been my home, it always will be. And that was the special part about coming to Tampa Bay at the end of my career. The 2 2, swung on and a long drive! Hit deep to right! That baby's gonna go! Number 3,000 is a home run for Wade Bob! I made contact, I said, well, I'm not getting that ball back. It was just such a, a special moment. Ranks right up at the top with, with everything that I've accomplished. Speaks volumes to, to have a 40-year-old guy go to a, go to a team and, and <laughs> here I am two years with the, with the organization being inducted into their inaugural uh, class of, of the Hall of Fame for the Tampa Bay Rays. And as the Rays honor Wade Boggs today by inducting him into the Tampa Bay Rays Hall of Fame. The Rays are trying to find the winning side of the ledger in the final game leading up to the All-Star break. And they have the Atlanta Braves in. A very solid team as we have seen and a very hot team. And so the Rays figure to have their hands full but looking for a good send off into the All-Star break. 
And they will have Zach Eflin on the mound. Trying to turn this thing around for the race. Well, you listen, if you're going to come down to a situation like this where you do want to head into the All-Star break on a high note, beat a red-hot team, this Atlanta Brave team, they've won 27 of their last 31 games, not a much better option than Zach Eflin taking them out. He has been so very good for the Rays, so very consistent. He's very efficient with his pitch count. That allows him to get deeper into games, and that's exactly what Kevin Cash and the rest of that Rays coaching staff is looking for this afternoon. Well, here is the starting lineup for the Atlanta Ball Club, brought to you by your local Ford dealers. Ronald Acuna Jr. is going to lead off in right field. Ozzy Alves at second base and Austin Riley the third baseman hits third Matt Olson the cleanup man at first the former Ray Travis Denard will do the uh, catching Marcel Osuna is the D.H. Eddie Rosario in left with Orlando Arcee of the shortstop and Michael Harris in center field batting night. Well, and for Zach Eflin, let's take a look at our Florida Lottery jackpot stat, the difference between the home and the road. Eight and one at home, really a tough luck lo loser. That was his last time out where he went seven strong innings, giving up just two earned runs, but ended up taking the loss in that ball game. Other than that, the numbers here at Tropicana Field outstanding. The ERA 222, uh, I mean the whip, less than a, a base runner per inning. So you do things like that, and you do a good job of keeping the ball in the yard. You're not going to give up much, and Zach has not done that here. Let's take a look at the defense and see how it's going to line up behind him in that outfield left to right. We've got Randy Rosarena, Jose Siri and Luke Rayley and across that infield third to first. We've got Isak Paredes, Wander Franco, Taylor Walls and Jonathan Aranda with Christian Bethencourt back behind the plate. And there is the right hander the 29 year old Zach Eflin set to go to work. Ronald Acuna Jr. stepping in. Starting the day hitting 335 with 21 home runs. And the first pitch is wide. One ball, no strikes. So we are underway here. And the pitch is a strike. One and one. The ground ball back over the mound, back of second. It's Taylor Walls making the throw. And that's out number one, Walls to Aranda. Well, Ozzy Albies, the second baseman. Switch hitting infielder. Boy, up and down this Atlanta lineup. Acuna Jr., 21 home runs. Albies, 22. Pitch is a strike. The cut, the miss. Oh, two. That's something that Zach's going to have to do this afternoon against this very powerful Atlanta Brave offense. He's going to have to consistently change speeds. That, that slow curveball is going to come into play along with that cutter and two seamer. Those are his big three, but he is going to have to mix them very, very well to keep this lineup off balance. And a cut the miss. And he finishes them with the fastball. Yeah, that so. ball was. That's exactly what he's up to. That's what he is going to have to do. The slow curve followed up by 93 right down the middle. And look how tardy Alves was. He was looking obviously for something else, but that's the game that Eflin is going to have to play with these hitters. Austin Riley. The first pitch strike fastball. Just a little bit off the plate. Boy, that pitch was close. Up the left side, that's going to hook foul. And against that low wall, ball two strikes.
And to cut the miss, he strikes him out. Finished him with a fastball the same way he got Albies. He gets Riley. Bottom of the first coming, no score. Dealers. Yadi Diaz will lead it off. The DH, Wander Franco to follow, and then Luke Rayleigh in right hitting third. Randy Rosarena, the cleanup man. Jonathan Aranda at first. Visak Paredes over at third, hitting sixth in front of the second baseman, Taylor Walls. Jose Suri back in center field, batting eighth. Christian Bethancourt, the catcher, hits out of the ninth spot. Well, taking the mound this afternoon for the Atlanta Braves, it's going to be right-hander Bryce Elder. Let's take a look at our Toyota Keys. First of all, how about this? In his 17 starts, leading Major League Baseball with a 245 earned run average. First pitch, a chopper foul. The thing that's interesting about him is, you know, you, you see the record seven and one. And you're like, well, okay, maybe maybe 10, 11, 12 starts. No, full 17 starts. Mm -hmm. A lot of no decisions, 102 and two thirds innings pitch, but leading the way in Major League Baseball with the ERA of 245. It's a strike, 0 2. And if you haven't seen this Atlanta ball club, guys like Elder will sneak up on you. They have some outstanding performers this year. And he's at the top of the list. There's a base hit. To the left of Riley and into left as Yandy Diaz is aboard to start things for the Rays. Well, well, here's why he sneaks up on you, Dwayne, because nowadays it's all about, you know, power and production if you're a hitter. For a pitcher, it's all about the big strikeout numbers. He doesn't have the big strikeout numbers. Right here, just 80 punch outs up against 30 walks in 102 and two thirds innings. So that not big strikeout numbers but what he does do is he does a great job of keeping the ball on the ground like he did right there with Yandy Diaz but Yandy able to find a hole. Wander Franco. Takes the ball. Franco hitting 282 to start the day double figures and home runs with 11. Down two and nothing. The Rays looking for a quick start and trying to turn the momentum of the uh, recent week and a half to a couple weeks here, trying to turn it around. The Rays have dropped seven straight coming into this one. And the pitch just down. 3 and 0 elder not missing by much no and he won't miss by much now he's not going to give in and go out over the heart of the plate but he is very good with his command as far as getting pitches into the areas that he wants them and he got just a part of the edge there 3 and 1 that's the other thing where he flies under the radar 89 miles an hour that's close to the top end of his arsenal he is not an overpowering pitcher but again, a good idea of what he's doing. Chop down to first. That's a fair ball. And the tag is on. And they did not get the tag. Yandy got in there. Not the most picturesque approach. No. Taking advantage over there of Matt Olson in a wide throw. This chopper is tailor made for a step on first double play, but the ball sails on him. And you've got to go out there and get it. And then Yandi Diaz able to sneak that left foot to the corner of the bag right here. Evasive tactics. And he gets in. So Luke Rayleigh with a chance to put the Rays out in front. He looks at a strike. Really had a double in the game yesterday, last night, as it turned out. I'd say those can be such difficult throws for first basemen to make because they're stepping on the bag. So they're in a direct line from first base to second base. And you've got a big guy like Yandy Diaz running right up that baseline. And you're trying to place that throw over his shoulder to your infield. And the fly ball toward Ryan Acuna made over to his left. Will grab it for the out. And Diaz remains at second base. See, that's where Yandy's size 
it, it, it's where it comes in, you know, pretty handy. Tough to throw around the big guy. Let's take a look at the Braves defense in the outfield left to right. We've got Eddie Rosario, Michael Harris, the second, and Ronald Acuna Jr. across that infield third to first. Austin Riley, Orlando Arcia, Ozzy Albies, and Matt Olson with Travis Darno back behind the plate. Rosarena. The pitch is down. Randy hitting 324 with runners in scoring position up with a man at second and two outs here in the first. Is down. Think about Nothing. when you think about Bryce Selder, he's going to attack these race hitters with a slider, a two seamer, occasional four seamer, and occasional changeup. Everything with him outside of the four seamer, it's about depth. Not a ton of run, not a ton of sweep, but a lot of depth on those other offerings. Yeah, you know, that ball straight down. That changeup, not a lot of arm side run, but you saw how it just fell into the dirt. That's where he is so effective at keeping the ball on the ground. 3 and 0 here to Randy. And now a strike. Uh, Randy thought that pitch was too close. 3 and 1. Randy, while he has been good overall with men in scoring position, it's been a difficult home stand. 2 for 19 for him. And he draws the walk. Single and a walk in the inning. Two men on with two men out. Elder's just not going to give in. Especially with a guy like a Rosarena. I don't care two for 19 at home. You still know that he is more than capable. So you fall behind him 2-0 and oh and you're going to start to try and nibble if you're Bryce Elder. And that's exactly what he did. And now Jonathan Aranda who was hitting 342. A little over 70 games at Durham. He takes the pitch wide. Stairs and it's two and oh. Are falling behind three of the five hitters. He picks up a strike out there, working over the corner. And so far, Roberto Ortiz is willing to go that way with the call. Again, as you pointed out, that's some of Elder's bread and butter. Oh, it, that's going to really, really benefit him. And he gets a strike call there. Just a little bit of the zone in the upper part. You see this pitch up and away. Darno does a great job of bringing it down, and he gets that call on that borderline pitch. Well, he's a guy that's just not going to be able to outstuff you, so he has to outthink you. And he has to outlocate you. That's what Elder's game is based upon. And so far this season, he's done a pretty good job at it. Single and a walk, two men on, two men out, two to the count on a Rondo. And a base hit up the left field line. Yandy's going to score. Arosa Rainer will hit third. The ball kicks away. Randy's going to score. Aranda will hold it second, and the Rays take a 2 0 lead. Well, that, first of all, Jonathan Aranda, a great job of staying inside this baseball. Bryce Elder is trying to get this fastball in. Doesn't quite get there, but Aranda, short, quick inside the ball, gets the line drive started the other way, and then this ball misplayed out in left field by Rosario. He's got a play of it off the wall and allows it to get by him. And that allows a Rosarena to come all the way around from first for the race second run. See right there, Brady Williams saying, get, get in there. Rosarena 
followed Diaz home. When that ball kicked away, Aranda's going to get two runs batted in. They give him a double and two RBIs, and the Rays grab the lead. Here's Isak Paredes. Little tapper foul. Riondi, who opened with a single and scored, and Rosarena walked with two outs. He has scored. Aranda in scoring position at second. For Paredes. Never foul. And two. to be outstanding overall but with men in scoring position well over 300 and he jumped on a mistake there 0 2 hit it out Here's Taylor Walls and think about this the Rays were down to one more quality strike from Bryce Elder and he's out of this inning and instead you put a four spot on him that quick. Ball one strike. Here's the pitch. It is a hanger. I mean a hanger. And we know that Isak Parade is standing right up on the plate, has good plate coverage, and he hammered. Ball's down, one and two. Well, he continues to be dangerous to the pull side. All of those home runs have been that way. And boy, they are pretty. They they are. He hits some majestic shots, and again, he gets right up on home plate, and he's able to pull balls that are on the outer third. You've seen him do that. His last couple of home runs have been pitches that have been away, and they have been on the outer part of the plate, but he's still able to get around them, and with authority. The count is full here on Walls. So this next pitch will be number 30 of the inning. Elder had averaged a little under 16 pitches an inning. Here's number 30 here in the first. And he gives up the walk. I'd say the one pick up walk number two. Well, let's go ahead and look at this home run pitch. This is the breaking ball, and look, it is right there on that outer edge, but it's elevated, and Paredes recognized the pitch early and was able to get the bat started around it, and he popped that ball out, gave the Rays two more runs, doubling their lead. They've had a really good approach so far against Elder as far as laying off those borderline pitches, at least until two strikes. So if they're going to be called, they're going to be called. That's fine. But we're not going to go chasing because we know that that's a part of your game. Rick Kranitz, the pitching coach, spending some time on the mound with Elder. Well, this is exactly the kind of inning the Rays needed. They've been looking for. After struggling the way they have, boy, this is fresh water. They have scored more runs right now through two outs in this ball game than they've scored in their last three games combined. And here is Jose Siri. Takes the fastball inside. Oh no, the count. Back. Ray 
Warriors get some action in the bullpen. Michael Tompkins, the right-hander. We've seen him before in a Twins uniform. Two and one. The right side. That's going to be a foul ball. Out of play. It's two and two. to Albies for the force to retire the Rays but they come up with four in the first two on the blast off the bat of Isak Paradis. As we move into the second inning Zach Eflin a one two three first and he faces the cleanup hitter Matt Olson. He takes a strike on the inside part of the plate. Darno will be Olsen, Darno, and then Ozuna. Popped up, short left. Franco out there. A Rosarena coming in, better angle, and he takes care of that. So one gone. Rack up some hits like Wander Franco Friday, July 21st. All fans receive a Wander Franco bat presented by Dex Imaging while supplies last. Visit RaysBaseball.com. Those were my favorite giveaway items or even buy items when I was a little guy going Absolutely. to watch games. Yeah. You go back and you get out the Nerf ball, little basement ball, at least in <laughs> Ohio, yep. cold a lot of the time. Darno, the catcher. The pitch is a strike. Yeah, you can have a lot of fun with those. The, a, a ton of fun. Are you kidding me? And, and you know, you were little anyway. You're a little kid, and all of a sudden that bat felt real. It was wood. <laughs> Up down the right side. That's going to carry into the seats. Nothing in two. In fact, there's a real good chance that I sneak down to one of the gates uh, to try to get your hands on one or two. siphon one or two of those away. Yeah. Pass him along a little bit. <laughs> Maybe late to the booth. He's standing in line. <laughs> it's a ball two strike count. Darno at 276, seven home runs. He's fit right in with this Atlanta ball club. And a strike on the outside edge. Well, so far, Roberto Ortiz. Moving this thing along, and you kind of like what you see. Yeah, he's looking to call strikes. You know, that's a borderline pitch, could go either way, and if it's going to be there, Ortiz goes, that's a strike. And I'll tell you what, it won't take these hitters too long to realize, guys, especially with two strikes. If it's borderline, you'd better be offering. And there's a breaking ball that catches the edge. Strike one, Marcelo Zuna, the designated hitter. Just as we started to give him some accolades. Do you know though the, the two that he has missed have been Eflin cutters. And watch Bethencourt stick it right there. Yeah. I mean that's that's on the edge. That's but he's done that two, twice. Two and one. Well the hitter's not the only component in this game missing the cutter. There's a strike right through the heart of the plate. Two and two. In a two one count. Now that, that's where you go. What was Ozuna <laughs> yeah. looking for? He got a two one center cut heater. And a pop up foul. That's going to carry back out of play. <clears throat> Check the high home camera. Make sure it's okay. Come on. 
camera over there taking some incoming. <laughs> wow. Back to it. Oh, shot up the middle. There's a base hit for Ozuna. And a two out single. Two seam fastball comes back, catches a lot of the plate. I'll tell you, Azuna did not catch that clean. That ball not off the barrel of the bat, but certainly he is a strong enough human to force that ball through the middle. Yeah, I was just thinking that that, that goes to his strength. Very soft spoken around him. <laughs> Rosario fouling it back, strike one. Eddie Rosario, the left fielder. Ozuna was the guy that took down one of the banners. Yes. With the AL wild card banner. Yep. Hit that thing at about 180 miles <laughs> per hour, and they gave it like, you know, 330. Yeah. That's <laughs> a lame number. It's not even remotely accurate. Yeah, th there should be an investigation. There really that. should. That bothers me. That was a long time ago. <laughs> you know, for, the they, for the credibility of the game, there should be a, an investigation. How he did. I mean, he almost tore down the back wall. Right. Right, he hit that banner so hard, and and then they you know they came back with like 373. It, 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 it just come on, please. There's a line drive going to be caught by Walls, and so we're going to the bottom of the second inning, four nothing Rays. Lovely lady, this beautiful lady here to my left has been a part of it. Ever since about four decades, I believe. This is Debbie Boggs. <laughs> Debbie Boggs, the wife of Wade. Um, you, this has been beautiful today to see Wade be honored. Just can, explain to me how amazing this has been. This is amazing. And, and I, I, when we played here, I mean, not very often did you see this many people here, too. So it's, it's amazing. They had a great turnout, great group of fans. And I still love the Rays animals out there <laughs> play around with. Yes, there's there's so much fun here around the ballpark and I love what Wade said during his speech today that being able to play here you didn't have to ship UPS boxes to New York or Boston anymore. How much fun was it to be able to have both of you here and Wade play in, in his hometown? Uh, awesome. We had we had kids that um, you know we had to they wanted to finish school down here, stay with my grandmother and they fly back up and pack up UPS boxes. Rent a car, rent furniture. We never had a house when we lived up there. So it was a lot, but it was well worth it. It was well worth it. All right, last thing for you. There's been a lot of cool Wade memories here in this ballpark in the about two years he played for this franchise. Is 3,000th hit your favorite, or is there a different one that comes to mind for you, Debbie? Actually, well, obviously the 3,000 hit had to be the biggest, but um, his first home run in here was kind of moving. It was, it was, you know, he doesn't hit them a lot, you know, so when he does, it's really... But I thought that was pretty cool. Well, he hit one for the first home run and for 3,000th hit here at Tropicana Field. And you've been along Wade's side ever since. Dwayne, this lovely lady here knows a lot about baseball and certainly is a big Wade Box fan as well. She does indeed. There's no question about that. And uh, uh, a fun chat about uh, the game. And, you know, you, you talk about. Uh, Playing the game, and you sometimes forget about the, the family. She's talking about moving back and forth, oh, back yeah. and forth, and all that. And it really was great for them to be here, home, and uh, be a part of bringing Major League Baseball to Tampa Bay. There's ball four at the court. Let's go back and take a look at that the first home run in Devil Rays history. Don't leave it middle in. Don't leave it middle in. I mean, listen, 118 home runs in his career. Not a huge home run hitter. He was the average guy sprayed around, but you hung one like that, he could send it on its way. Pitch to Yandy Diaz is down. One of those. I recall Davey Martinez had the first hit. Yes. You know, like a little dribbling yes. hit to the right side, and Wade got the first home run. And then who knew that hit number 3000 would be a home run the first guy ever to do that. How about that. I, I mean to get to that number. Number one yep. to do it then on a home run. Are you kidding me. One, one here to Yandy. But I'm sure we're going to take a look at that when when Wade comes yeah, into the booth we'll and chance to talk about that night. Yeah you'll see another another hanger. Don't 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 hang it because he can deposit it for you. One, 
one count on Yandy Diaz. One and two. Nothing court drew the walk. Moves at first. The Rays took advantage of some mislocation in that first inning. Put up four. Two and two. That's what we're talking about. You know, Bryce Elder with already, what is that, one, two, three walks in this ball game. Three walks the first time through the order. The Rays doing a great job of not going after his chase type pitches. There's another great example. So he went with the changeup and then that fastball running in off the plate. Yandy Diaz able to lay off of both of them and you put them right back into that full count where now he's got to come into the zone in theory. the move and a ground ball up the middle right on the bag. Alby steps on second and throws to first. The one place you don't want to hit the ball and it turns out to be a 4 3 double play. That ball hit hard by Yandy a ball that was right in the middle of the plate but you see Ozzy Alves who was shaded up the middle. He basically fields that ball standing on second base way too easy. Unfortunate set of circumstances there for the Rays. Wander Franco and that's a liner and it's grabbed by Alves reaching across there to make the catch hard hit ball we go to the third four nothing Rays. The world can work better by Toyota let's go places by Frontier uncable yourself get fiber internet and by GTE financial where banking is instantly easy. Lloyd Boggs officially inducted into the Rays Hall of Fame today will be uh, joined by Wade in the next inning or so. We go to the third. Orlando Arcia swings and misses that first delivery for a strike. Down at the count, 0 2. Yeah, a little half hearted swing there at that slow curveball. It just could not hold up. Started to go after it and just realized forget it. Too late to stop it. Foul right back. And so far, Eflin doing a, a, a really nice job of, as we talked about early in this game, mixing and matching with the speeds. The cutter, the two seamer, that slow curve. Ooh, that one a little bit off the plate, down and away. One and two. Right back to that slow curve ball. It's taken down, two and two. Center really angling and is there to make the catch. One gone. Really got an early beat on that one and made that play routinely. I'll tell you what, that's something that these Rays outfielders do a great job of across the board, yep. getting good jumps, efficient with their routes. Michael Harris, center fielder for Atlanta. And the first pitch strike at the knees. Eflin coming off the seven inning outing against the Phillies. A little tapper foul. That was on the 4th of July. Well, what an effort he gave. You know, yep. matching up with his buddy, Aaron Nola, and they were just matching each other inning after inning. You know, the Rays dropped that game three to one, and both were outstanding. Nola and Eflin. Eflin gave up two runs in seven innings. Yeah. 
Off the plate in two and two. I'm trying that front door two seamer and that ball just did not cooperate. Ooh, way wide there. Reached by Bethancourt. Three and two. First full count. Eflin has had on a hitter in this game. Pitch foul back. We'll see another delivery. Three two. You know, Zach Eflin is one of those guys because of the nature of his stuff and the ability to command it. He's going to run in to his fair share amount of strikeouts, but he's a guy that also goes out there and is looking to put a hitter away three pitches or fewer. On the ground to the right side. Walls is there to scoop and toss. Two up, two down. He wants to make very quick work of you and preferably balls just like that. Ground balls to his infielders. That's how you average on the season so far. You're averaging under 14 and a half pitches in any. Yeah, that's elite. It, it's yeah. I mean, the gold standard is 15, which very rare that a pitcher is able to even stick to that number, and he's he's well under that. Cunha pops up right side. Aranda in the foul territory, keeps his eye on it, and makes the catch. It's a one, two, three, third. Luke Rayleigh's going to lead off when we come back. The raffle jackpot proceeds support youth programming in Tampa Bay. So you can win big and support the community. Visit RaysBaseball.com slash 50-50. Here's Luke Rayleigh. Leading it off in the bottom of the third, around Arena and then Aranda. She's down. Luke came into the game with 15 home runs, hitting 275. He hit the fly ball into right his first time, chops this one. One and one. I'll tell you, how valuable has he been to this mm -hmm. team? You, you, you can DH him if you'd like. You can play him at first base. You can play him in the corner outfield positions. And he swings, driving it back into right center field. Acuna on the run, reaches up, and he makes the catch on the track. Boy, off the bat, that appeared to be extra bases. And Acuna running a straight line got over there, reaching up to make the grab. Matt Luke Rayleigh puts a charge into this. You, you can see right there Acuna Jr. playing deep and shaded towards right center field. And boy, he needed to be there. He, every little bit of the range. And a nice finish. And here's Randy Rosarena. Oh, T Wayne, he's hey. here. He's here. <laughs> How are you? <laughs> nice to see you. The strike. Wade Boggs had just stepped in, folks. Looking dapper, I Coming might in say. Hot, by the way. In the little. <laughs> <laughs> and there's a line drive off the bat of a Rosarena in the left. And so the oh. Rays have a base runner with one out here in the third inning. I'm taking all credit with this explosion. Well, we're going to give it to you. Oh, <laughs> mercy. And you look dapper in the oh, uh, Hall of you. Fame oh, jacket. Man. I'm telling you, that's a perfect fit. Oh, mercy. Fitted. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Hey, are, can, is, it, uh, is it safe to say now that as far as you're concerned that we're, that we're kind of tapped out on Hall of Fames? There's nothing left for you to go into, right? I think there's an Irish Hall of Fame <laughs> somewhere out there, but RCA is going I to think get the out. at second here. I think I've tapped out. You've, you've pretty much covered all the Hall of Fame. Oh, mercy. I couldn't be more blessed. I, I, I really couldn't. And and I was chatting with Dwayne before the before the uh, ceremony that my body of work wasn't very much here in Tampa Bay. But coming here, being on the ground floor, being being part of an organization to where they brought a 40 year old guy in and going for the 3000 it it um, I tell everybody we were just 25 misfits because that's basically what expansion baseball is 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 nobody wants them and you have 25 guys that don't fit anywhere and now you <laughs> have to find that glue to sit there and go 
Yeah, who's a roller to short. Arcee is going to take it to first. And the Rays are out in the bottom of the third inning. But, you know, with you here, we're going to throw the commercials away. We're going to stay right here. <laughs> I got nowhere to go. I'll tell you. I got nowhere to go. I, I love you guys. I, you know that. Here's the thing, and, and you're right about an expansion team comes in. You know that you're probably not going to win right away. You know, that comes with the territory. But to do what you did, something that had never been done before, I thought was really special. We talked about hit number 3,000, first hitter. To do that with a home run, I, I just, uh, it couldn't have been better. The script could not have been written any better. Well, I, I think that some of the conversations that I used to have with some of the guys on the, on the plane is, is we can't lose 100 games. I said, I've never, yep. I've played 16 years in the big leagues and I've never lost 100 games on any team that I've ever played. And I don't want to start. <laughs> and we didn't. I think we had 90, in 99, we won, uh, lost 99, but, but we never lost 100. We never lost 100. And you know, a lot of guys were just feeling their oats and trying to make their way into the big leagues. Trying to find their spot in the big leagues and, and some talented players. There were some talented players. And the way the way that I look back on it was at the end, at the beginning of my career, I had Carl Yastrzemski in 82 and 83. And I went, I, I watched every move he ever made. Now here I am at the end of my career, and I'm going, I'm going for 3,000 hit milestone. And I'm 40, 41 years old at the end of my career, and I'm going. Majority of these guys are 23, 24 years old, and and they have a whole future ahead of them. But that was that was the thing that that I sort of put the blinders on. I put the blinders on and said, okay, let's. I'll I'll go out and do my job if the rest of you guys do your job. And. and much to what you were just talking about all of those young guys looking at your every move how you approach your business day to day I've got a question for you as far as that you never know how 3,000 is going to come is it going to be a rifle the other way is it going to be how is it going to come down so you never know you launch okay so there's the home run I want to know <laughs> when the decision was made for you to plant the kiss at home plate. Was that coming around third? Oh, no, 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 no. It, or you had that played out already? No, no. Uh, B.A., there was, it was, the, the great part of the whole thing was so unscripted because I thought I was going to get a 55 hopper into the hole at short. <laughs> and ESPN had told my son, who was a bat boy at the time, Brett, pick up first base and give it to your dad. And so they bring Chris Haney in. I'm at 29.99, and they bring Chris Haney in. And Larry calls me over and says, uh, "We're going to pitch it for you." So my son is is joined at the hip, and his <laughs> eyes get no, no, really no. big. His eyes get really big, and he goes, "Dad, is he serious?" I said, "No, because I'm going to beat him with a bat <laughs> right now." <laughs> so I walk up to the I walk up to the plate, 29.99, and never really haven't. A lot of uh, bats off of Chris Haney. I said, "Okay, here we go." And he threw me a breaking ball, one-two, and it just stayed there. But it was a little bit outside, and I said, "Oh my goodness, that—that's pretty nice right there." And he threw me the <laughs> same exact pitch, two-two, and that was the one that I launched. And right when I made contact, I said, "Well, I'm not getting that ball back." And Billy Hatcher wanted—he was the first base coach at the time. He wanted me to give him a big hug. And I said, Billy, I'm rounding the bases. I can't give you a big hug. So I high fived him. And then I blew a kiss to my mom on the way out, yep. uh, th uh, going to second, came around third, and then blew another kiss to my mom. And I said, you know what? I've stepped on home plate so many times. I'm going to bend down and kiss it. And I, that was decision made halfway to home. There you go. I said, I've stepped on it so many times. I'm just going to kiss it for 3,000. <laughs> But when I looked up to blow another kiss to my mom is when the big tackle came in front of me and I I didn't get to see it but that was unbelievable by the security guard. The ground ball going to go through in the right. Albies is aboard with the base hit. I mean we were talking about that to get to that number that was an unbelievable accomplishment to be able to play 18 seasons in the big leagues get to 3000 but then to be the first ever to <laughs> pop it. I mean that's come on. Well it, the, the Vegas odds definitely what's not a home run <laughs> and and. Uh, 
like I said, I, I thought it was going to be a 53 hopper through the hole at short and stand on first and thank everybody. But to do something sort of like. A base hit the other way off the bat of Riley. That's going to allow Albies to go to third, setting up a first and third. Nobody out situation here in the fourth. Let me ask you something. Generally speaking, what was your approach at the plate? What were you looking to do? Because you were one of those guys very difficult to pitch to because you hit the ball where it was pitched. You want to stay away, you're going to not be afraid to line one into left field. You want to come in, the bat was quick enough to get you out and, you know, and, and shoot it to the pull side. So what was your approach? I for 11 years I had the greatest weapon and that was the wall in Fenway Park and I always had an inside out swing. I hit by recognition. I never I never wanted to be fooled and I, I could see the tumble on the fork ball the dot on the slider the change of elevation on a curve ball. So my eyesight was tremendous. So. I'd go through the repertoire of a pitcher and say, OK, he's got a curveball. He's got the, the thing that, that really set me apart at the end of my career was the guy that had the two seamer and the cutter. Oh, my goodness. And that was Kevin Brown. When, oh. when he had the two seamer that he'd start at your hip and run it back on the plate, or he'd throw the cutter in. And you really couldn't see the cutter. Oh, it was a nightmare facing Mariano uh, Rivera. That was, ooh. but. The, the cutter revolutionized the game and coincidentally Mariano Rivera is in the Hall of Fame because of that cutter. that one pitch because of one pitch one pitch that's all he, he ever threw it, 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 that's it, all he ever threw doesn't that say everything about that guy I know you know it's coming you yeah. can do nothing to stop no, no. it. no one and one to count on Olsen and a big cut there and the foul back one and two I go back to that night you know you got 3,000. You started three hits down, and, and obviously. And Charlie Nagy. I'm, I'm yeah. hitting 217 off Charlie Nagy. <laughs> so yeah. I know. So, so, so what was the approach? What were you thinking going into that game? I'm, I'm driving across the bridge with, with my son, Brett. And I said, what do you think, buddy? He said, tonight's the night, Dad. And I said, really? I said, I got Charlie Nagy. I'm, I'm 217 off. I'm not very good at all. And I need three. I need three. He says, no, tonight's the night. So we go into the umpire's room. He rubs up all the balls, and and I let him pick out the bats for the game. And he he got all the he got all the credit picking out the right bats. And but I got to I got to 29.99, and I'm standing on first, and Jim Tomey's sitting there, and he's just beaming, ear to ear, and he goes. This is the neatest thing I've ever seen. And I went, yeah, it's pretty neat for me. <laughs> he goes, you might have two more at bats tonight. And that soft spokenness that, that I was going to say, Jim you do had. a good Jim Tomey. You did a good Dwayne nice. Bats in the. Uh, Turn it. Hey, nice double play right Run out. Run's going to score, but it's a 4 6 3 double play. I was going to say, yeah, that's your second impersonation today. You did an awesome Dwayne Stats during your ceremony, and that was a pretty good Jim Tomey. I got to I gotta give you credit. Oh, he's, he's, he, he was so. He goes, this is, this is the neatest thing I've ever seen. <laughs> and that little southern draw that he has, and he's from Peoria, Illinois. I don't know where he got the southern draw from, but but it was, it was so neat, and he goes, yeah. I said I got one more bat and, and I don't know he goes oh. he says you get it tonight you'll get it tonight and then I came up and, and they brought Chris Haney in and, and there you I go said, all right I got to stay inside the ball and shoot it to left uh oh there's a spinner don't hang it yep. <laughs> there's a spinner don't hang it oh that one's not coming back well listen I, I so getting that obviously that hit finishing your career here having grown up here yeah. High school here, all of that. Just talk about the culmination of your career here in Tampa. Well, when I when I moved, to, oh, that's not going to be 2 and that one is drilled deep, towering back into the seats in left, and Darno has just belted his eighth home run of the year to make it a 4-2 ball game. Frustrating there on the 0-2 pitch. Wade, go ahead. What do you got? Well, when I, when I moved here in 69 and played Little League and growing up in the Tampa Bay area, the only thing that we had was Al Lopez Field with the Cincinnati Reds and the big red machine. 
And then when they started talking about baseball coming to Tampa Bay, it was so exciting. So exciting. And then at the end of my career, they said, we're going to get a team in Tampa Bay. I said, well, I, I'm going to be a free agent in 1998. <laughs> so <laughs> perfect timing. So there's a there's a good possibility that I have a chance to uh, to uh, come and, and play for Tampa Bay and it, it's so special and 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 growing up and seeing seeing the great crowds that we we, we have right now and and calling Tampa my home it, it is is very special. Two strikes here out of Zuna. Two runs in for Atlanta. Pitches down. One ball, two strikes. Well, don't be a stranger. I won't. You know, I won't. No, I, I, I go, absolutely. I, I love you guys. You know that. <laughs> and, and and like I like I said, this 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 is my home. This is my home, and I love you guys. It's always great to come back. Thank you, Dwayne. Thank uh, you, BA. Oh, hey, pleasure. Thank you for coming in. You got to it. Yes, sir. Congratulations on everything. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Always great to be Appreciate with you. It. Yes, sir. Thank you. Take a look at some of the ceremonies. Free game. <laughs> Bottom half of the fourth, Taylor Waltz leads off against the right hander. Bryce Elder out there. And there's a first pitch strike at the bottom of the zone. Jose Siri will be next, and then Christian Bethencourt. Ray scored four in the first, and Atlanta two in the top of the fourth. Pitch is down. One and one. 4 4 0 for the Rays, 2 4 0 for Atlanta. Stairs. Two and one. Down now, three and one. Having Wade up here with us, it, it just occurs to me, it, you know, how simple the game seems when you break it down the way he did, because he could recognize all of those pitches. Well, that's what I wanted to know. You know, a, a guy that was as good as he was for as long as he was. What was your approach? And 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 I, I just thought it was interesting. You know, a lot of guys say, "Well, I try to stay through the middle of the field," and yeah, all these different things, which are all valid. They're all yeah. true. But he talked about pitch recognition, yeah. how he had elite eyesight and could pit out the spin on the pitches and react and swing accordingly. Mm -hmm. And I thought that was fascinating. And, and you know, we were talking about it in between innings. It's a lot of the great ones amongst a lot of other attributes a lot of the great ones did one thing consistently and it allowed them to be successful for such a long period of time and that is they kept things simple mm -hmm. don't overcomplicate there goes on the tap to third this is Riley and there goes Wallace digging for third he is in there safely aggressive Walls goes first to third on the ground ball and makes it just ahead of the return throw. Well, here it is aggressive base running by Taylor Walls and then over there to cover it. another throw a little bit wide. And now they're trying to get Wallsy as he's <laughs> on the overslide, but he kept that oven mitt stuck to the top of third base. Well, you got to hold on to dear life. So now man at third and the infield will come up. So the Rays looking for some good contact from Bethancourt here. And a ground ball that's going to go through. Got it through the drone and infield. And Wald scores. How about that? The Rays get that leadoff walk and the hustle of Walls setting up that runner third infield in scenario. And Bethancourt comes through. This team is tired of losing. They're tired of losing. And so, you know what? Going into the All Star break, let's go ahead and open up the offense and be aggressive. Taylor Walls was aggressive. That got him to third. And then that pulls the infield in, and Bethancourt finds a hole. Or well, how important it is to answer with a run after Atlanta put two up in the top of the inning. Here's a strike to Yandi. Diaz opened the first with a base hit. 
and eventually scored with the Rays put four on the board. Now covered up by Darno. One and one. Some great aggressive base running by Walls after he had walked with the third on the ground ball to Riley and scored on the base hit through the drawn in infield. The base hit by Bethancourt. It's one and two. into deep left center. Harrison's going to go to the deep part of the park. It is gone. Home run off the bat of Yandy Diaz. Bethancourt scores in front of Yandy Diaz, who has just hit his 13th home run of the year. And the Rays take a 7-2 lead. Well, he was long overdue. And what a time to get one. You talk about answering. You get the one on the board, a nice answer. Then you go get a slider and you deposit that over the wall in center field. That is a strong human. First home run for Diaz since May the 26th against the Dodgers. And he belts this one out of here. A two run blast. And that's going to be it for Elder. Atlanta will make the pitching change. Raise up by five. The home run, 422 feet. Call to the bullpen brought to you by the Florida Lottery. The Florida Lottery, which has generated over $43 billion for Florida's students and schools by West Shore Home, America's most admired home remodeling brand, by the aggressive attorneys Winters and Yonker, and by Outback Steakhouse. Big plays deserve big steaks. Catering by Outback Steakhouse. A lot of hardware in Wade Boggs' uh, home. You know what, and, and one of the, uh, the pictures that was just run across that screen reminded me of something that I wanted to ask him. And unfortunately didn't I wanted to ask him about the horse ride oh, celebrating yes. <laughs> the championship. Didn't he get in trouble for that or or the or the police officer got in trouble for that. Someone was reprimanded for him jumping on the back of that horse. But what a ride that was. Yeah. 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 I'm sure it was against some rule. <laughs> of course. But in that situation you know you throw the rules out the out window. The window. <laughs> Are you kidding me. You're world champs. Franco. Pops it up into short left. Upset that he missed that pitch. And so Michael Tonkin comes in and gets the first man he faces. Let's, let's go back, take a look at uh, yeah. Wade. Yeah. There, there was definitely some, some blowback from this, but again, who cares? You just take a little ride. That's all. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> yes, sir. What a fun day. Luke Rayleigh. That's been said before in the same sentence with uh, Wade Box. What's fun day? <laughs> many times. Yes. Many, many times. I thought the most underrated, perfect addition to this day of honoring Wade Boggs was the uh, the giveaway. Oh, you mean the. Uh, the rock. Oh, the koozie. Oh, the koozie. Oh, the koozie. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Right. That giveaway. That giveaway. Yeah. The perfectly timed giveaway. <laughs> the giveaway that we wanted to see him put to work. 
Yeah, yeah it was. Take a look right there. <laughs> see? There it is. Yeah. And um, we got to get our hands on some of those. Those are awesome. Yeah. Ball is going to be out of play. We know a guy. We know a guy. That's right. Yeah, those those are really nice. Yeah, I mean, look at that. You you can count. You can count up into the 80s and 90s. <laughs> Some of us can. <laughs> oh my! Wow, getting aggressive there with the 110, 120. Yeah. Jeez. Okay. Counts full on Rayleigh as well. And he pops it up. Foul ball. That's going to carry out of play. Well, the Rays adding three runs here in the fourth. The big blow, the two run blast by Yandy Diaz following an RBI single by Bethancourt. Up foul again. Darno starts after it, but no chance. Will Elder work three and a third, allowing seven runs, six hits. He had not allowed more than five earned runs in an outing and had gone at least five plus in his previous 17 starts. The shot, and that's foul. They're really dispersing some souvenir baseballs during this event. And that young man is very happy. Look at that. Nothing better than that. Foul ball again. So this is going to be at least a 10 pitch at bat. What a day. What a day. Bring your bring your glove. You never know. That's right. And a swing and miss. Now the fastball finally gets Rayleigh. Yandy Diaz belting the home run. His first has made the 26th. It comes for the man aboard. Caps a three-run inning. And the Rays now lead seven to two. Yeah, I love the 90s tour. For details, visit RaysBaseball.com slash concerts. We're headed into the fifth inning. The Rays hold the 7-2 lead. Here are the standings in the AL East. The Rays up by two, even with Baltimore in the loss column. You can see the Rays have four more wins. That's where the advantage comes. That loss column is always the important one to check first. Those are the games that you cannot make up. Yep. Baltimore can win those four games that the Rays have played more than them. They can win those games and they'd be obviously tied at that point. So that does become the most important column as the season moves along and you look at standings. I'll tell you it, it, that you know you've got this ball game here you got to finish up you go on the road to Kansas City and Texas and then you come right home and you're going to face that Baltimore team for four. Yep. That's going to be a huge series here at Tropicana Field not too far off. It's fouled back. Count. Two strikes on Eddie Rosario. The pitch count for Eflin in the mid 60s. Foul. Rosario, Garcia, and then Harris coming up. And he got a chase up right there and strikes out Rosario. What's the first out here? In the fifth, celebrate the historic season with new Rays apparel. Grab your Rays limited edition 25th anniversary merchandise today. 
purchase in store or online at the BayRepublic.com. Strike one. Stairs one and one. Right side. Ball's over to handle that one with a toss to Aranda. Marcia is out number two. And now Michael Harris. Harris has been a hot hitter out of that number nine spot, hitting a little over 250 starting play in this game. Strike. When you go back over the last month plus a couple days, he's hit 362 for over a month now. One and one. You know, they, this Atlanta lineup, there's so many ways that they can beat you, so many different players that can beat you. Again, no soft landing spots, trouble up and down. One and two. That's the pitch up. And not bad having a guy in your nine hole that for the last month has been hitting 360 How plus. That? I know. I mean, and that's pretty much every day. 27 games in that stretch. He's off the pitch up. Two. And two. count junior, junior there on deck there's battles fouls it Again, a foul ball. So this is a battle. <laughs> On the mound, back to second. Franco with the toss to first. Harris out of there, and it's a one, two, three inning. Fifth inning brought to you by your local GMC dealers. And go to any Kane's furniture store within five days and there receive a Tijuana Flats coupon. Visit Kane'sStrikeout.com. Bottom of inning five. Randy Rosarena leads off. First pitch is wide. Michael Tonkin, a right hander out there, following Bryce Elder. Close to Randy. Randy's been on twice. He walked and scored in the first, singled in the third inning. Hey. One where his offense coming to life today with a four run first. Sock Paredes, a big blow, a two run homer, followed a two run double by Jonathan Aranda. Well, I thought they came in with a really good plan of attack against Bryce Elder, and they were able to stay disciplined mm -hmm. in that attack and just not nibbling and, and, and biting at things that were on the edge until they got to two strikes. They forced him out over the plate, and when he made those mistakes, they were able to cash in. Torreno will make the turn and hang on there. Oh, he almost got found himself out there in no man's land. 
And by the time he did put on the brakes, his helmet was almost halfway between first and second. But there's a base hit. Well, he's going to challenge you. A lot of these race hitters will. They're going to shoot a ball into the outfield. They're going to force that outfielder to keep them at first base. The idea is I'm going to go maybe try to turn this into a double, but Acuna Jr. able to get it in quickly enough. Keep Randy at first. Well, he's on for the third straight time. And here's Aranda. I want to check Rosarena's helmet for a little spring. <laughs> in the top of it. Strike. Because that thing's popping off. That is it it going to eject. Yep. The ejecto model. That's it. <laughs> He's caught. And the throw is going to go into center field. He's going to wind up at third. Well, the helmet popped off about halfway to second, and a Rosarena winds up at third base with a stolen base and an error charge to Darno. Well, long deliberate delivery by Tonkin, and that allows a Rosarena to get a great jump and Darno to rush the throw that ended up wide of the bag. And now he had thoughts about maybe taking advantage of some lack of attentiveness out in the field there for the Braves. He's watching, 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 saying, hey, you know what? Maybe I can catch him napping. Saw Ellie De La Cruz do that for the Reds in the ball game yesterday. Stole third and then basically stole home. How dynamic has he been for Cincinnati? He he's turned Major League Baseball into his own little Little League field. Ronda lifting one down the left side. Riley's after it from third, and that's going to fall in front of the bullpen. Untouched by any Atlanta defender. I mean, how about the other day, where Davey Martinez, you know, managing the Nationals, had the, the, you know, the butt end of his bat checked. He had a little sensor on there. Had it checked. They took the bat out of the game. And later in the game, they cleared it. Said, no, 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 you can use it. And that at bat, he hits one, what, 460 feet. <laughs> I, I, he's been doing things that have been just incredible. And I'll tell you what, that Cincinnati Red team is, is yes, they're a different team than the one we saw. Unbelievable how they have turned it around. Fouls it. Well, Ronda had put together some good numbers at Triple A again. And had a big double here in the first inning of this game. Spins him around a little bit, a little close. Deck Paredes. There's Aranda and Paredes who got the race started in the first inning. It's a popper into short left. Rosario will come in to make the catch. And holding now to third is a Rosarena. Well, let's go back to that first inning. Isak Paredes going to get himself a slider. Right on the outer part of the plate and Statcast 3D powered by Google Cloud, 104 miles per hour off the bat. But that was enough. That was runs three and four. Quick start by the Rays. Well, there's Paredes again with the infield up. Ball one. Have had runners aboard in every inning. That's fouled right back. To pick up another run in the fifth. They had a four run first inning and a three run fourth. The three in the fourth answered two. Atlanta scored in the top of that inning. Hot shot foul. Out, fellas, over the bullpen down there. Now to play. Of 
Michael Tompkin, the right hander. Old Tompkin and a wave and a miss. He gets the strikeout. That's a big out. Two gone now. Able to sweep that slider away from Isak and well off the plate. Trying to protect with two and, and chasing. That's exactly what Tonkin was looking for. That runner at third with one out. Now two can move that infield up back and Get an out any way possible. Try to keep the Rays from expanding this lead. Walls takes it upstairs. A couple of bases on balls drawn by Taylor Walls in this game. Upstairs. Two and oh. All of the runs charged to Elder, the starter. Braves have had the best bullpen ERA in the National League. With a strike two and one. Duncan pitching this year out of their bullpen. First time he's been back in the big league since we mentioned the other night with the Twins. This one is up three and one, and that was in 2017. Pitching could come from everywhere. And it's always being searched mm -hmm. for by all of these teams, all of these organizations. It's going to be full now. You think about how many pitchers that you work your way through during the course of a season. You know, the Rays have used a ton of pitching already this season for a number of different reasons. So always on the lookout. There's a shot up the right side toward the corner. That's a fair ball and will take one hop out of play. A two base hit and a run batted in for Taylor Walls. Well, the Rays pick up their eighth run of the game. I'll tell you, that's a demoralizing shot by Taylor Walls. Tonkin has worked his way close to being out of this inning without giving up anything. And instead, he leaves a pitch out over the heart of the plate, and Taylor Walls able to get into it and bounce that ball over the wall and right. Perfectly played. So the Rays with eight runs, eight hits in the game. Now Jose Siri. Siri 0 for 2. A couple ground balls, one to short, the other one to third. And Walls with good speed out there at second base. Siri taking that first pitch all the way, strike one. Side Olsen from first near the line, and that ball is just foul. So the Rays are finished in the fifth. But a Rosarena opens with a base hit. He scores the run, driven home by Walls. 8 2 Rays.
into the sixth inning, the Indeed player resume. And Ronald Acuna Jr. all set to lead off. Boy, he is an instant threat, instant dynamite at the top of their lineup. Well, look at right here. I mean, before the All Star break, he's the first to do it. 20 plus homers, he sits at 21. 40 plus stolen bases, he's 41 out of 48. 50 plus runs driven in. That's 55. All the while coming into play tonight or to this afternoon, he was hitting 335. So, I mean, he's doing just incredible things offensively. Well, the Rays are going to go to the bullpen. Zach Eflin departs after five, and Zach Mattel. Enters. Yeah, and that's interesting too. And I know the Rays have a big lead, but you know Zach Eflin has gone six innings or more in 11 of his last 12 coming into today, and he had the pitch count, you know, under control. I mean, he, he wasn't like there were a lot, 77 in yeah. five innings. There there was room for for another inning, but Rays making the decision to pull him out of there and turn it over to the pen. Well, here's Acuna Jr. Which pitch is upstairs. I, I do that that is an interesting move you, you have to you know 77 pitches five innings and it's the top of the order and and we we made the point in his last start Zach Eflin so well equipped to go through a lineup a third time number one just look at the numbers third time through a lineup they're awesome and he's able to do that because he's got he's a smart pitcher he's got the arsenal to be able to to figure out how to get guys out three times and he's very efficient like he was again today so Interesting move here. Yeah, and there's always something behind these moves that you try to figure out. Well, you hope somebody asks. <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah, that's the thing. We, yeah. you, you might want to try and figure it out. A lot of times you never hear. Mm -hmm. that was for you. Two to the count on Acuna Jr. Three and two. And the ground ball right side. Walls gets over there and throws out Acuna Jr. Always good to get that first man. Well, here he is, Zach Eflin, a very good five innings, efficient innings. Moving his pitches around once again, the slow curveball, we knew that was going to play a big role, the change of speeds. That cutter effective at keeping the ball on the ground. A couple of four seamers at the top of the zone that he was able to work effectively. Made that one mistake to, to Darno, and you know we'd love to have that one back because that was in an 0-2 count, but outside of that, he was flawless. Want to know the count to Albies. Spins him around. Two and nothing. So five innings for Eflin, four hits, two runs, both earned, no walks, five strikeouts, 77 pitches, which is popped up by Albies. And that's going to be Franco, two gone. Did you know with Year for Life scratch offs, you can win up to a million dollars a year for life? Yeah, it's uh, literally right in the main. I'm literally blown away. Austin Riley. Oh. Strike. By the way, did you see Wander Franco on that pop up try to do his best Jose Siri? <laughs> Let it come down, come down, come down. Oh, and then throw the glove up late. Yeah. There's only one Siri. Well, watch this. He's doing his best. Take uh, a look. Uh, uh, at last second, right there at the shoulder. <laughs> But you're right about about Jose. Yeah. He can take the most routine fly ball and and make you make you wonder. As much as you might try, it's hard to duplicate Jose Sierra. Agreed. One of a kind. Agreed. <laughs> oh, base hit, punch through the middle here on an 0-2 pitch. 
Austin Riley has his second hit of the day. So two outs, a man on, and that will get the power of Matt Olson to the plate. Listen, he, he's looking for a home run number 30. Our Burger King ruling the plate, and he is certainly doing that. Shohei Otani, another home run yesterday. That takes him to 32. And there's Matt Olson next in line at 29, looking to get to that magic number of 30. By the way, wh what about what Shohei Otani is doing? It, I, it's incredible. It, it really is. I, there's no question about that. None. I mean, you think about how dominant of a pitcher, and then you think about what he does offensively. I mean, he's one of those guys that. For the foreseeable future, if he stays healthy year in and year out, you just hand him the MVP. You get one after the other. Oh, a shot toward left center. Extra base is coming for Olsen. Riley's going to score easily. It's a double. So with two outs, the Riley single and the double by Olsen. And Atlanta makes it a five run game. Now this team more than capable we know that and that fastball right there up in the zone but Olsen does a great job of staying on top of it. You know what's frustrating two outs. Yes. Two strikes on Riley. Two strikes on Olsen. And now here's Darno. Upstairs. Tell this is the opener Wednesday, a couple of innings and two earned runs allowed. One and one. Four years old, I'll tell you, he's been very good for this Atlanta club. This one is foul back. 18 home runs last year, a career high. Remember, in 2019, he had 16 home runs with the Rays. Yeah, did a lot of nice things here for Tampa Bay. And now, part of what you think about who he's paired up with, Sean Murphy. Back. You don't get many catching tandems better than that. Probably none. Now Murphy's just having an unbelievable year all the way around. And then it comes Darno. He came into the game 276. It's a home run. That's his eighth of the year. Chop foul. Holds the count at one and two. A big hitter. It's an 8 3 ball game, but you got a man in second. And that's going to take care of Darno. So a big out right there. He's out on strikes. Bottom of inning six coming, 8 3 Rays. There's going to be a lot of recapping going on with All Star Week. Randy Rosarena, Yandi. I'll tell you what, that's going to make the uh, the executives happy. They love the recap. Yeah. And there will be plenty to go over. You know, Yandy Diaz, Randy Rosarena starting that game. Randy's, of course, in the home run derby tomorrow night. Do not miss that. Shane McClanahan, obviously, a part of that game in the All Star game, but obviously will not be pitching. Joe Jimenez takes over on the mound. Bethancourt. Going after the first pitch in fouling it for a strike. So Tonkin worked an inning in two thirds. He up a run on two hits. And now Joe Jimenez. You know who had a chance to be a part of that team was the guy that started today for the Rays, Zach Eflin. Mm -hmm. oh, ground ball over the mound. 
Albies the throw to first in time. I, I think the fact that he was scheduled to start today probably kept him from being the guy that was going to replace Shane McClanahan. Mm -hmm. Certainly was deserving. So was that gentleman right there. And you hope that he is going to be back shortly after that All Star break is over. I think that's the plan. I think that's uh, McClanahan's plan. <laughs> yes. <laughs> at least, yeah, at least yeah. it's Shane's plan. <laughs> See what the team thinks. Yeah. He wants to be back out there yesterday. Oh, and all the count on Yandy Diaz. Balls, no strikes. It's foul back. Two and one. I'll tell you what, it was nice to see Yanni pop one over the wall again. Yes, it, it was. Gone yep. on a little too long. Yep. That's been such a, a a big part of his game this season. Turning on that the power. Cut the miss. Two. And strike three call. So Yandi caught looking. Retired for the second time today. Duncan rewards are a hit. Save them, stack them, use them how you want. Not a member? Join on the app today. Wander Franco. Strike. Wander looking for his first hit today. One. one. It's grounded to first, line to second, hit a fly ball to left. Two balls and a strike. Jimenez has been on a hot streak out of the bullpen for Atlanta. Fly ball the other way to left. And Rosario went back and then had to circle and come in and managed to get there. Three up, three down. We go to the seventh, eight, three raise. Story, the hometown kid who helped usher in this franchise in its birth year in 1998. I had a chance to talk to Brian All, the race president, who spoke today during the pregame ceremony honoring Wade Boggs. He said he grew up watching Wade play and remembers being blown away by how good of a hitter that he was. He called Boggs one of the founding fathers of Tampa Bay baseball and said Boggs' 3,000th hit and the first home run here in team history in 98. Those are the first real memories for so many fans of this Devil Rays and now Rays franchise. It was but guys, really fun to watch all kind of fanboy for a little bit over one of the game's greats and a cornerstone of this franchise. Yeah, you're right about that. Here's Latell taking that little ground ball off the bat of Osuda. And that's one unassisted on the play at first base. Well, I, and we talked about that home run number 3,000, the first time it had ever been done. I mean, history right there. Mm -hmm. And it, uh, yeah, it's part of the fabric of what the, uh, what the franchise is. Yeah, free agency worked out very well. Able to come back home and finish his career here. Obviously, being honored today, and what a special day for him. And you know, we talked to him about it. I, I think that he has maxed out his Hall of Fame entrances. <laughs> There's, a, he, he did mention the Irish American Hall of Fame. Yeah, something could, along yeah. those lines. Yeah, well, that could come calling. But outside of that, I think that he's he's entered everyone you're eligible for. Cut and miss. One and one.
offense disappearing on Rosario. Now it's one and two. Broke out in front with a four run first. Atlanta hitting in the seventh with the Rays holding an 8 3 lead. That's going to be a base hit the other way. Rosario got that bat out there and strokes it into left. Yeah, he really tries to have a two strike approach and shorten up to the baseball. He was able to do that with the split here. That split stayed up. You see him just kind of a half swing. Just get that ball started the other way. It was elevated, so lined it into left. Well, you're seeing more and more of that around the league. You know, guys with legitimate two strike approaches where they're not just turning it loose on every swing, trying to play the middle of the field, trying to go the other way. Garcia swings and misses, strike one. And I think that the tendency is to do that a little bit more because of the changes in the game. You know, bigger bags, the running game is back. Mm -hmm. No shift. Yep. A long one back into left toward the corner. Arena on the run. He got there and made the catch. Randy Arena running a straight line to that short wall in left, and he hauls it in off the bat of Marcia. Boy, this ball high in the air. Is it going to make it? Is it going to get there? Is Randy going to get there? And there you go. Just shy of that wall. I don't think that was going to get out. Covered some ground. Two outs, and here's Michael Harris. Foul ball. Nice pick by Eric Young right there. Strike one. MLB Ballpark app completing your next visit to Tropicana Field by Advantage Game Tickets. Redeem offers, ex access exclusive content, and download the MLB Ballpark app today. Now, ball popping away, and that's going to allow Rosario to move up to second. Pitch down. Oh, a wild pitch. Charge to Littell. Takes a strike. One and two. And a base hit into right. Rosario is going to head to the plate. So Harris, the number nine hitter, drives in a run. His first hit. Of the day's 26th run batted in. This is what you were talking about that last half inning, how with two outs, Braves able to cash in a couple of mistake pitches. Yeah, boy, that's the time you want to. You know, keep them down. They scored here again in the seventh inning with two outs, mm -hmm. as they did in the sixth. And the Rays will talk it over. Single game tickets on sale now. View the summer schedule and purchase tickets at RaysBaseball.com. 2023 season presented by Bayfront Health. Once again, the hits are even eight apiece. The Rays have an 8 4 lead. And the top of the lineup about to show up here again. Acuna Jr., 0 for 3. Here's the other thing. The 
that concerns you. Acuna Jr. now getting his second look at Mattel in as many innings. You give up enough base runners and you're facing tough hitters again. And strike the count. Yet to the track, he makes the catch. One run, a couple hits, and a man left. Seventh inning stretch presented by Hyundai. I don't know if I could do this after watching Randy in the, uh, you know. Anyway, let's go to our new teeth now. I'm having a hard time. New teeth now game summary. First of all, it was a quick start by the Rays offense. You know, looking to close out this first half with a victory. Four runs in the first inning kind of set the tone as they were able to get Bryce Elder out of there after three and a third. And on the other side, Zach Eflin, five very good innings, 77 pitches, gave up just the two earned runs on the home run with Travis Darno. Struck out five, Yandy Diaz. Nice to see him. It had been a, a minute since he hit a home run, but he hit one out the center field. That was a nice sign for this Rays offense. But now, up to the Rays offense to try to add to this lead and the Rays bullpen to close this thing out as the Atlanta Braves looking to make a late charge here. In the meantime, the Rays will come into bat in the bottom of the seventh. With Luke Rayleigh, the number three hitter, followed by Randy Rosarena and then Jonathan Aranda. The Rays keep adding on here. Rayleigh looking for his first hit of the game. in there for a strike. Oh two. Jimenez picked up a strikeout in the sixth in the one two three inning. Check swing to Ramon De Jesus. Under it, popped into short center, and out there, Garcia makes the catch. Bit of a serpentine approach to that ball, but he made the catch. And one out in the race, seven. And Randy Rosarena. That pitch for a ball. Ground ball. It's the mound. Albie's there at second to make the pickup. A couple quick outs in the seventh inning. Allison Aranda will be the hitter. The Rays have Jason Adam up in the bullpen. Around the part of the Rays four run first when he doubled in two runs, one for three today. Which is a strike. Oh, 
one. Swing and a miss now one and two. have been led throughout this game putting up a four run first they lead eight four right now two and two the count to Aranda who's holding down first base in this game to this ball game and let's take a look now at our Chevy plays of the game and there you have the derelict uh, dereliction of duty groundskeeper out there yeah, while everybody else is hard at work he's dancing off and Randy Rosarena joins him Randy Ro and he goes every time he does that not that but that that the, the splits uh, you, you feel it you feel it up in the booth Randy appreciating it I don't know how he continues to do that but it seems like every weekend he just taps out of you know actually doing his job and he it becomes a dance party out behind second base. Yeah it's difficult to. Uh, to imagine trying to do that ourselves. Oh they, I I could and I would stay down and there would be a, a stretcher and there would be surgery. Yeah. Oh here's a first pitch from Jason Adam. Albie sends a high fly ball to right and Rayleigh is there. Well in front of the track to make the catch. So that's one down here in the eighth. You know, and I've seen a guy that looks eerily familiar to that groundskeeper. Have you? As a security guy. Really? Who will pull the same stunt. Okay. Instead of actually doing his job, gotcha. it becomes a dance party down one of the lines. Mm -hmm. People love it. Yeah, well, some people just break out dancing. They people love it. There's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. If you can do it, you know. Yeah. Stay gainfully employed. Yeah. Contributing member of society. Go for it. <laughs> One strike the count here to Riley. Now wide one and one. Been a difficult run for the Rays here leading up to the break, but they jumped out in front today with a four run first and have managed to hold that edge. Leading eight four now in the top of the eighth inning. Strike one and two. two and two. Adam last worked one inning Thursday in the Philadelphia series. Right there, two and two. <laughs> Foul ball. Eflin for five. Two innings for Latell. Now Adam. Joining the club last year. And a line drive into center. A couple hops. Siri makes the pickup. And Riley has his second hit of the game. Play for the highest instant win top prizes ever. 
up to one million dollars a year for life. Enter non winning tickets into the bonus play promotion with year for life scratch offs must be 18 or older to play play responsibly. Counting outs now one on one out here in the eighth. Matt Olson. Dangerous left handed bat up there. He lifts the fly ball into center catchable for Jose Siri. And that is out number two. Two gone with a man at first in the eighth. For Travis Darno. Homered in the fourth inning, his eighth of the year. No ball back, strike one. Nardo's home run came on an 0 2 pitch. A breaking ball there from Zach Kepler, but probably the only pitch that he would want back. And Darno able to get it into the seats and left. Outside of that, Zach Kepler was outstanding once again in his five innings of work. Now that's now Dwayne the the tenth time that Zach has given up two earned runs or fewer mm -hmm. in a start. Came in with a record of nine and four. It's foul and it's a one and two count. With Isak Paredes set to lead off. Or they got a blast in the first inning from Isak Paredes, a two run shot, tapping a four run inning. Yandy Diaz connected in the fourth inning, his second hit of the day. The Rays put up three in that inning and two scored on Yandy's home run. They lead eight to four as they come in to hit in the bottom of the eighth inning. And it will be Paredes, Walls, and Siri coming up. Beyondi had gone 34 games between home runs and an opportune time to blast one. Colby Allard, the lefty, against Paredes. The pitch is a strike. Jimenez was very good. Two perfect innings with two strikeouts for Atlanta. Allard. One and one. going to be a base hit lofted through the middle soft line drive and Paredes is two for four now gets a four seam fastball this ball kind of running in on him but he's strong enough to get that ball off the label and punch it into center field I'll tell you as we head toward the all star break Paredes is a guy who just had a great first half you know and we talk an awful lot about his offense, you know, the home run ball, the left field, and all the day. The third base. Mm -hmm. I mean, done a great job down at third base. Yeah, he's been a very important part of this team. No question about it. I don't know the count on Taylor Walls. He doubled in a run in the fifth inning. And finds himself ahead in the count. This time he's been on all three plate appearances with two walks and the double. Mm -hmm. 
three and zero. Oh. Draws a walk. So a single and a four pitch walk. And just like that, two men are on. How about Taylor Walls? Three walks today. Yep. Well, he's another very versatile, very valuable member of this Rays team. Play him all over the infield, and he plays him all the positions very, very well. Now, Jose Siri. It's a strike. You know, you so often hear about versatile players and the value they are beyond their offense, what they can do. And it is so readily apparent in Taylor Walls. The way he plays the game and the things he does defensively. High popper back into center field. Harris will make the catch and the runners hold. Well, he plays elite level defense at second base, at shortstop, at third base, but he works at it. You know, he that's does. the thing. Yep. And on the bases as well. Yeah. He's he's fun to watch on the bases because if, if you don't pay attention, he's going to hurt you on the bases too. Has he been thrown out the opposition? What one time? Yep. Maybe. Mm -hmm. I mean, he picks the right thing. He knows the matchups that are in his favor, and you're right. He will take full advantage. And it's not even just the stolen base. It's the instinct on the base. Yep. It's going from first to third. He cuts the bases extremely well. Great sense about where he is. Upstairs. Balls, no strikes. Pitch is popped up. Short left. And Rosario makes the catch. So two outs in the eighth inning. Reminder now, Braves Live, the post game presented by Advent Health. Rich and Denard coming along after the game. They have a lot jam-packed in that, including the press conference from Kevin Cash, interviews from the clubhouse. Recap of the day and a lot going on so far today. Yandy Diaz lines it into left toward the corner. That's going to get Paredes home. Let's see if it can get Walls home. He's around third on his way to the plate. He will score standing on a double by Yandy Diaz and the Rays tack on two more. It's a four RBI day for Yandy Diaz. Well, he gets the curveball right there. Look at him stay right on that pitch into the zone. And Dwayne, just because you asked for it, let's watch Taylor Walls cut the bases. This is what we're talking about I mean, right here. It's so efficient. Root efficiency. Hey, listen, he scored the tenth run. In four ball game now. Don't you love the guys down in the truck? I do. The way that they yeah. can support mm -hmm. stories. Oh, they're right there, there to help us. <laughs> I mean, all the time. Are they consistently helping? <laughs> Are they? <laughs> uh, two and zero. Oh. You know that that goes to upbringing. Your parents <laughs> teach you to be helpers. Great upbringing of all those people in the truck. That last um, so it's suddenly gone absolutely silent, which is when you start to get nervous. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're putting wires together and got the chemistry sets out. It just fouled out of play two and two that the last West Coast road trip that I was not a part of. Yes. I uh, I, I snuck down to the studio mm -hmm. at, during one of the day games oh, yeah. and just snuck in you know ease my way into the cloud room to watch them <laughs> do their thing. Yeah. 
wizardry that's in action. Yeah. That's a it's a tense room. Two a wave and miss. Franco is out on strikes. And so the Rays add two. We go to the ninth. It's 10-4. It's been a big day, including the uh, Wade Boggs induction into the Tampa Bay Rays Hall of Fame. It was great to get him in the booth. Be, uh, he, he's got personality that does not stop. Great stories. It took a lot of credit for the Rays offense showing up today. Which, yes. Listen, double digits and runs. And there you go. From a seventh round pick out of Plant High School, all the way to the Hall of Fame, including now the Rays Hall of Fame. How about those 12 All Star appearances were consecutive years? Yep. 12 years in a row. Robert Stevenson is the new pitcher now for the Rays. The Rays adding a couple in the eighth inning, making it 10 4. Marcelo Zuna leads off. And the pitch is the ball, as Ortiz. 1 0. By the way, Yandi with three hits today and his average up to 323 and it would appear that he will be the hitting leader at the break. One and one now about Zuna. Oh, two strikes. Well, he has put together one heck of a first half. Going to start the All Star game. Deservedly so. And with that long ball, and we saw another one here today to straightaway center field. He really has opened up his offensive game. That average you're talking about leading the league. Great on base guy. And a swing and miss. Zuna is out number one in the ninth. And, and think about this too. So Yandi's going to go to Seattle. He's going to play in the game, and then he's going to jump on a red eye mm -hmm. to get back here for a scheduled C-section for yeah, a new edition. I mean, how about it? That is some kind of all-star break. Sario out front, strike one. Yeah, that's truly coast to coast. Yeah, for I mean, and again. <laughs> one and one. And uh, four runs batted in today for Yandi. That ties his career high. Fourth time he's done that in his career. Second time this year. Uh, one and two, and that foul ball caught. Bethancourt. Bethancourt's thinking, here we are in the ninth inning. The All Star break's coming in. And I got one of those. Take a little time to regroup with the lower extremities. <laughs> it's one and two. Elster break needs to get here quick. <laughs> Swing and the miss. We're one out closer. Rosario strikes out. Well, the slider, Stevenson, he's got a nasty one, throws it hard, gets some good depth with that pitch. Nice scoop on that backhand by Bethencourt. 100% already. Here's Garcia. And there's a strike. Garcia trying to check. Ortiz said he went around. And a wave and miss. 
nothing in two. Well, he's been leaning on that slider in this outing, too, and for good reason. He's been executing that pitch at a high level. These uh, brave hitters that he has come up against have not been able to recognize it, so why do anything different? The 0 2 pitch. Wave and a miss. This one is all over. Stevenson with three strikeouts in the ninth, and the Rays win it 10 to 4. 10 10 and 0, 4 left for the Rays, 4 9 and 1, 4 left for Atlanta. No, no surprise. Stuck, stuck with that slider. An outstanding job by Stevenson as he's going to pull this pitch down and away. The final pitch of the first half for the Rays ends in a strikeout. A big victory here with 10 runs on the board. Nice way to head into the break. Win for Eflin. He's 10 and 4 before 25,000 and 25. Two hours and 29 minutes time of this game. For Brian Anderson and Ryan Bass, Dwayne Stats, hope you've enjoyed the telecast. Raise the winners. Raise live the post game comes your way with Rich and Denard right around the corner.